Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name is Matt, and today we're going to review the graphic novel Velvet, the Complete Edition. And before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, it really helps me out. It lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's get straight into this thing. Velvet is a spy kind of thriller mystery book that's set in the Cold War era. It is a book I totally missed by Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting. Now, if you know anything about that team, they did the fantastic run of Captain America that was used for the MCU movie. So this team created uh, Winter Soldier and that whole storyline of Bucky Barnes coming back and then being evil and then turning good and all that stuff. So uh, really, really good run of Captain America. And then I guess in around 2013, they did this book for Image called Velvet that came out in single issues. There was 15 issues, uh, and then they released them in four graphic novels, and then they finally released them in this complete edition. So this complete edition is all 15 and a bunch of extra stuff uh, as well. It's a nice hardcover by Image Comics. I believe it retails for like $50, but it's uh, cheaper on Amazon. I think you get for like $35 or something on Amazon. I just picked this up randomly because I have been wanting some good kind of like spy thrillers or crime noir books in my life as far as comics go. So I was like, I need to read everything that Brubaker's done because he pretty much exclusively writes crime or uh, spy stuff. And that's why I kind of picked this one up just kind of randomly because it was the complete edition and it seemed interesting. So the premise of this book is there's a spy named Velvet Templeton from the fifties, who was one of the top agents at, at uh, this place called arc seven, kind of like MI six or the CIA or one of those kind of places. And uh, she was one of the top agents there along with her partner uh, who was her husband. She eventually over time just kind of falls out of the field and just becomes like the secretary in the office. So by the time the 70s roll around, everybody there thinks she's just, you know, a secretary who hasn't done anything other than become a secretary. It's the 70s, so that's not that odd. So age-wise, she's in her late 40s, early 50s uh, in this book. For the most part, they flash back to her in the 50s every now and then. In the 70s, she's in her late 40s, early 50s. And so the premise is she's been a diligent, you know, great secretary who is a way overqualified for her job, basically. But she enjoys the work and likes being able to not get shot at and everything and have, have the danger at part of part of it. But you get to see kind of agents come and go and whatnot and hear about the crazy missions and stuff. So it's better than having to work in like the regular world or being dead as a spy. <laughs> and then something happens where uh, there's a, a newer spy who kind of is cocky. Everybody kind of treats her like Money Penny from... The uh, from the James Bond movies, like they flirt with her ish, but not like seriously or whatever. So they definitely are playing off of that James Bond trope of Money Penny, or even later on, you get M in the James Bond series, like in Goldeneye, who was played by an older woman, and she kind of flirts with James and stuff. So it's kind of like that, where even in her uh, older age as a woman, she's still like has fun flirting with these young agents who are going around and you know doing all the work now for the agency. So one of these young agents uh, that is particularly kind of abrasive at the beginning, he really treats her like, oh, yeah, you're just a secretary or whatever. He stumbles into some information that he should not have seen, and basically it gets him killed. It just so happened that Velvet was supposed to go meet him that day, and because of that, the people who kill him end up framing her for his murder. This creates her to have to go back to spy mode to figure out who framed her, what is this whole spy versus spy thing going on? Because basically someone in her organization killed him. She knows that it wasn't like a, uh, a separate agency or anything. It's all someone on the inside of her agency killed him for information. She doesn't know what information, but she knows it involves this guy's last mission from what he saw. And from there, it just kind of takes off where she starts backtracking. And it even involves, you know, going back in so far into her past with this information and things that happened to her in her missions. So it's a very epic book that spans, you know, 25 plus years of the agency and her career. And that's basically the plot of it. Now, just getting into the writing and the art of it, this book is super solid writing, obviously. Brubaker, you know, really goes out of his way to make it hard to figure out who did it. You can see it coming if you really paid attention uh, I did not see it coming. I was looking for it too. 
I was trying to figure out, you know, who, who it was. There are a lot of, you know, players that they introduce in it, uh, but they do it in a good pace. So you don't get overwhelmed by how many people are there and enough people kind of get introduced and then eventually get taken out that once they get taken out, new people come in and you're like, okay, I have, I have space for these new people to memorize their names. So it's not overwhelming how many characters are in play, but he does a good job of balancing the, like who could potentially be a suspect uh, you know, who's the best suspect. Uh, and then also her investigating, you know, he peppers in the little uh, clues that she's finding that, you know, help the reader kind of figure it out too. So I think if you were really on top of your game, you could figure out who did it. Uh, I was not. So, so by the last issue, I was like, oh, that's who did it. So, uh, but they definitely solve it. And it is a complete story in this one complete volume. The art is fantastic. Steve Epting does a really good job of drawing a mature woman who looks capable still and not like frail or something. Because I, I think it would be tempting for an artist to just be like, oh, we'll just like weather her face or whatever. And that makes her old. Also, she's in like a spy suit the whole time. So you don't really see the rest of her body for the most part. Sometimes she is like in a dress, like or masquerading in some ball or whatever, you know, because she's undercover. And in that case, she's wearing like a dress that is distracting from, I would say, her face. Um, she does have a, a lock of like white hair uh, that kind of would give her away if you were, you know, looking for her. But other than that, she would blend in pretty easily. So he just does a really good job of making it seem believable. They explain how she can kind of match these younger men in a fight and everything where she's able to get like a spy suit, they call it. Like it's actually like something that enhances your strength and ability a little bit. And it also is like bulletproof and it has like squirrel wings so she can like jump off of a building if she's running from someone. So that kind of like makes it more believable that, okay, this older woman who used to be an agent, obviously she was one of the best before. We're, we're able to suspend belief, you know, enough so that everything makes sense and is perfect as far as like how she could take on these people. Also, a lot of the people underestimate her because of her age and because she's been a secretary so long, they think she should be more rusty than she is. She kind of has a one up on a lot of people who underestimate her in that capacity. And then with the suit, it like adds to that believability. And then also, you know, since she was a spy for so long, she has a lot of contacts that she can call up who aren't like dead or whatever. They're like, uh, you know, people that would help out on missions who are still alive, they're like smugglers or whatever, or, you know, gun people where she can get guns and ammunition for someone. Another good thing about this book is the pacing is really, really good. It was 15 issues originally, uh, but I did not notice the issue breaks every time. Everything just moved seamlessly into the next part. Just a really good, tight, concise, action-packed story. Like, it's paced really well. There's tension, there's action, there's you know, downtime where she's trying to figure out exactly what happened. And then there's a lot of flashbacks where there's, you know, discovery of things that she realizes happened back in the day that were leading to this, but she missed it. So just overall, really, really well-written story. So I highly recommend reading this series. If you prefer trades, you can get the trades uh, individually as soft covers. It, I would recommend buying this hardcover because it is a great series. It's nice to have that big volume all complete you're not going to go wrong if you like spy thrillers so i'm going to give velvet the complete collection uh, a five out of five check it out if you like tom clancy if you like mission impossible james bond any of that stuff movie wise check this book out it's right up your alley and with that being said we'll see you guys on the next one